Chapter 71 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Are you so fond of stealing one's partner? Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Jean was taken away by Fourth Master Swan. Monica felt as if she was sitting on pins and needles. Would Jean take a knife and slash her the next day when she woke up? No. Monica could not hold it in anymore. She said, this matter has to be consensual. I can't let my sister lose her innocence just like that. Knox grabbed Monica again. He wanted to tell this silly girl that her sister had lost her innocence to Fourth Master Swan long ago. Why is she so agitated now? Knox told Monica clearly, don't worry. Fourth Master Swan will definitely not take advantage of the situation. Monica seemed to believe him but not really. Instead of worrying about your sister so much, why don't you tell me what happened between you and Finn? When you asked me to help you pursue him back then, you did everything you could. After only being in love for a year, you broke up with him. You're too fickle. Knox deliberately changed the topic. Monica was very unhappy. Why do you always think that it's my fault? Didn't Finn tell you why we broke up back then? It'd be weird if he did. Knox rolled his eyes. The three of them, him, Fourth Master Swan, and Finn were very close. It was not an exaggeration to say that they were life dot and dot death friends. Nonetheless, among the three of them, Fourth Master Swan and Finn never talked about their personal matters. Fourth Master Swan was all right because Knox had always been by his side and more or less knew something. However, Knox did not know anything about Finn. It's useless to talk about this now. Anyway, I'll divorce Finn sooner or later. Monica did not want to talk about the past. In her opinion, many things were over. She did not like to hold grudges. Monica also did not like to make things difficult for herself. She had always thought that she was luckier than the average person when she was born, so when she was unhappy, she would always laugh it off. Listen to my advice. Finn is a good person. It'll be a pity to lose him. Ha! Monica chuckled with disdain. Knox still wanted to say something, but Monica took the wine glass. You said you wouldn't go home until you're drunk. Well, Knox could not be bothered anymore. He took the wine glass and started drinking with Monica again. They drank until they were both drunk. Knox and Monica walked out of the private room. Both of them were trying to walk in a straight line, but they obviously could not. I'm actually not drunk. Monica burped and said drunkenly, I'm just sleepy. Do you think I'm drunk? I wouldn't have let you go if you were not sleepy. Well, I need to go to the bathroom to use the toilet. I definitely don't want to throw up. I just want to pee. Knox said very seriously. Monica waved her hand and walked out by herself. Just as she reached the door, a familiar voice was suddenly heard coming from behind her. Monica. Monica slowly turned her body and swayed as she looked at the person behind her. She looked at him for a long time. Michael. Are you drunk? Michael asked her. I'm not drunk. I'm very sober. How can I be drunk? Monica said very loudly. I won't get drunk no matter how much I drink. Michael went over directly and held Monica. His body was really soft. At that moment, Monica leaned into his embrace. Are you going to send her back? Eden asked Michael. The two of them had dinner together that night. The moment they came out, they saw Monica walking in front of them. Yeah. Michael had helped Monica into his private car. I'll leave first. We'll meet again next time. She's married, Eden reminded. Michael's body stiffened. I know. Don't let a woman affect your bright future. Michael did not reply. He helped Monica into the car. Monica was a little drunk. She seemed to have heard the conversation between Michael and Eden, but it also seemed to be an illusion. 
After all, she did not hear a single word at the most crucial point. She leaned against the back seat of the car, her world spinning. Michael did not say anything. He quietly sent her back to the entrance of the residential area where she and Finn lived. Monica opened the car door. Michael had gotten out of the car one step ahead of her. He walked to her car door and helped her out. Monica straightened her body and said, Thank you. I'll go back on my own. I'll send you back. No need. I can walk on my own. Don't try to be brave. Michael. Monica called out to him. Michael looked at her quietly. I'm married now. So, other than Finn, other men aren't allowed to touch you, right? Michael asked her. His tone was calm, and there was no emotion in it. Monica was silent for a few seconds. It was not that Finn was the only one who could touch her. That man would not touch her either. Monica just did not want to cause any trouble. She said, you should go back and rest early. Good night. As she spoke, she pushed Michael away, intending to go back on her own. Monica, Michael called out to her. Monica staggered and stopped. If I say that I want to get you back, what will you do? Michael enunciated each word. Monica's heart skipped a beat. Michael walked toward her step by step. He was so close that she could almost feel his breath above her head. The next second, he suddenly hugged her from behind. Monica was shocked. I still love you. I've always loved you, he said as he leaned over to her ear with deep affection. Monica pursed her lips tightly. Her heart was beating very fast. It was very fast. She thought that all relationships missed were missed. Whether it was her and Finn, or her and Michael. Monica could calmly get along with them, she could forget about the past, but she did not think that she would have to start all over again. She did not answer. Her silence made Michael take the initiative. He took the initiative to make her turn around and stand face to face with him. His lips were close to hers. Monica looked at Michael and watched him get closer. Michael. Do you have to let me see this every time? A male voice was suddenly heard coming from behind her, suppressing her voice. Michael's lips were close to Monica's lips. He could touch her lips if he pouted a little. In the end, he let go of Monica and stood up straight to look at the man standing in the dark. Monica turned around at that moment and saw Finn in a daze. She saw him walk out of the dark and walk to her side. Finn said to Michael, Are you so fond of stealing one's partner? Michael's face darkened. If you treat her well enough, why are you worried? I'm not worried. Finn sneered as he pulled Monica over. Monica was caught off guard. Due to her drunkenness, she lost her balance and fell into Finn's arms. Finn said, I simply don't like it when others touch what belongs to me. After saying that, he dragged Monica away. Michael watched them leave with a ferocious look. What belongs to you? Monica was never yours. Chapter 72 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ms. Lawrence, do you want to go to my place? Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Finn dragged Monica back. His actions were really rude. Monica resisted a few times, but because she was drunk and could not exert her strength, she was still dragged by Finn. She staggered along the way. Can you not drag me? Monica complained. This son of A B asterisk T C H. Can't he be gentler to me? Finn pressed the button on the elevator and held her hand even tighter. Ten minutes ago, he received a call from Knox, who said that Monica had come home drunk alone and asked him to pick her up. Then, he bumped into her and Michael. When the elevator arrived, Finn brought Monica into the house and brought her to her room. Monica struggled to break free from Finn. She did not take off her clothes or shoes and directly laid down. Then, she pretended to be a corpse. Finn looked at Monica for a long time. In the end, 
he went over to help her take off her high heels. Then, he went to the bathroom and wrung a wet towel for her to wipe the makeup on her face. Just as he was about to leave, he saw Monica clutching her skirt uncomfortably. She was not ladylike at all. Monica was wearing a tight dot fitting blue dress tonight. It was very easy for her. To have a panty flash. Finn gulped slightly. He squatted down again and moved her hands away. Then, he helped her to unzip the zipper on her back. After he was done, he turned around and left. Finn, Monica suddenly called out to him. Finn's body was a little stiff. You're leaving just like that. Monica asked with a seductive smile on her lips. Finn pursed her lips. He turned around and looked at Monica. He looked at the loose dress on her body that did not fall off, but it seemed to be faintly discernible. Are you a man or not? Monica's voice was quite loud. At this moment, she had a severe headache, but she also seemed to be unwilling to give up. Am I not charming to him at all? Back then, did he only agree to date me just to deal with my pestering? What are you looking forward to? The corners of Finn's lips curled up. Monica suddenly got down from the bed. Her dress hung improperly on her body. Finn's eyes narrowed. Monica stood barefoot in front of him, her fair arms wrapped around his neck. She said, Do you dare to sleep with me? Finn gulped. I dare, Monica said. After saying that, she tiptoed and approached Finn. Her lips were pressed against his. Once might not believe it. This was their first kiss. They did not have any intimate contact during their passionate love that year. Even when the priest said that they could kiss at the wedding ceremony, Finn only lightly kissed her on the cheek. Monica felt inexplicably aggrieved. She closed her eyes, wanting to deepen the kiss. Ah! At home, there was a sudden scream. Monica paused. Finn pushed her away. Monica's body was unstable, and she fell to the ground. Finn did not seem to expect it. He wanted to carry Monica up right away. Ah! The scream was even more panicked. Finn gritted his teeth and turned to walk out. Finn! Monica sat on the ground and called out to him. Finn was stunned for a while. What exactly is our relationship? Monica asked him in a ridiculous manner. What is your relationship with Michael? Finn asked back. Monica bit her lip. The words Michael said earlier suddenly appeared in her mind. He said. That he had always loved her. Since you haven't let go of him, what right do you have to talk about a relationship with me? Finn left after saying that. The door was slammed shut. Monica sat on the floor and watched Finn leave. He left to look for his old lover. The corners of Monica's mouth suddenly curled up into a smile. A teardrop fell from her eye. She had taken the initiative to chase after Finn back then, so she should unconditionally endure all of Finn's. Disdain for her. At the same time, under the same dark sky. Edward sent the drunk Jean back to the entrance of the Lawrence family's courtyard. Jean's eyes moved slightly. She was a little slow and wanted to open the car door and leave. At that moment, her body was suddenly pulled by someone. Jean lost her balance and fell directly into someone's firm chest. She twisted her body. Jean twisted her body on someone's body, trying to break free. Ms. Lawrence, the person said in a low voice. Jean raised her head and looked at the man in front of her. Who am I? He asked. Sometimes, no, most of the time, Jean felt that this man was crazy. Her lips parted slightly. Fourth mast, HNG. Jean widened her eyes. Before she could finish, Edward had kissed her fiercely. In fact, because she had opened her mouth to answer his question, her lips were open, so. Jean pounded on Edward. Nonetheless, she did not have any strength. Alcohol was indeed not a good thing. She would not drink it again until she died. 
she was holding back her anger. After a long time, the man who kissed her finally let go of her red and swollen lips. He let go of her lips but did not let go of her body. His face was buried in the middle of her neck, emitting hot air. Jean started to twist her body again, resisting. In the next second. Dovi ko, ah. Jean cried. Her neck was in pain as she was bitten by someone. After biting her, the person asked shamelessly, Ms. Lawrence, do you want to go to my place? If Jean had the strength at this moment, she would cripple this fellow. She said, I don't want to go. Let me go. I want to get off. Wait for me for a while. I'll send you back. The man did not force her, but his voice was unusually hoarse. However, at this moment, I'm not in the condition for anyone to see me. Why? Jean was baffled. Edward raised his head slightly and leaned close to her ear. He whispered a few words into her ear with a hot breath. Jean's face, which was already red from being drunk, was completely hot. Isn't he cold and abstinent? It was the F asterisk King Lai. Jean pushed Edward away in exasperation. At that moment, Edward conveniently let go of her. Then, he took a deep breath, opened the car door, and got out of the car. Outside the car, the cool night breeze blew. Fourth Master Swan seemed to have adjusted his emotions. He walked to Jean's car door and opened it for her. Then, he bent down and carried her up. Jean protested. I can walk on my own. But I want to carry you. Dot. Edward carried Jean and walked straight into the Lawrence family's courtyard. It was very late at night. Other than the servants, everyone else had returned to their rooms. Edward carried Jean and walked straight into her room. The door was pushed open. George was sitting in front of the computer, waiting for Jean. When he saw the door open, he quickly turned his head. When he saw Fourth Master Swan carrying his mother, he frowned. Edward placed Jean on the bed. George ran to Jean's side and looked at Fourth Master Swan warily. At this moment, Jean's back was also facing Fourth Master Swan. It was obvious that she wanted to distance herself from him. Edward did not care. He said to George, Do you know how to take care of people? Yes, George said immediately. Take good care of her, Edward said. I don't need you to remind me. George's tone was not good. Fourth Master Swan smiled. At that moment, he even reached out and touched George's little head. The action was very intimate. George did not like Fourth Master Swan treating him like this. He showed it on his face. Fourth Master Swan pretended not to see it. He turned around and left. When he left, he seemed to glance at the computer screen in the room. He did not say anything and left. Chapter 73 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. First day at the Lawrence Enterprise Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless fantasy translation the next morning, Jean had a splitting headache. She did not remember what she had experienced last night. When she woke up, she was in a complete breakdown. Jean struggled to get up. She rubbed her aching temples and went to the bathroom to wash up. It was her first day at the Lawrence Enterprise, so she could not be late. She braced herself and washed up. Her phone rang. Jean had the habit of keeping her phone by her side at all times. At this moment, she looked at the incoming call on the screen and pressed the speakerphone. I heard that you were drunk last night. It was Kingsley. Yes. Jean nodded. You clearly know that your martial prowess is basically zero after drinking, let alone getting yourself drunk. Kingsley was somewhat reprimanding her. Without me by your side, do you not know how to take care of yourself? What if someone takes the opportunity to violate you? Violate, Jean's hand that was brushing her teeth stopped for a moment. Some bad scenes from last night suddenly appeared in her mind. Damn it, dot her hand that was brushing her teeth tightened again. Why aren't you talking? 
I'm brushing my teeth. Jean's words were a little unclear. Don't drink any more in the future. Do you hear me? If you want to drink, you can only do it in front of me, understand? Kingsley was very serious. Okay, Jean replied. You're going to the Lawrence Enterprise to work today. Kingsley saw that Jean had agreed and then got to the point. Yes. Is half a year enough? It's enough, Jean answered casually. You're not bargaining with me. You're already showing the Lawrences favor by giving them half a year, Jean said sarcastically. If everything goes as expected, three months will be enough. So, was your mom blind back then? Kingsley asked seriously. The dead are dead, so be kind. Kingsley did not say anything else. He reminded her, don't force yourself. If anything happens, look for me. There's just one thing that I need your help with. Jean finished rinsing her mouth and washing her face. What is it? It's Mubier. He came to Southampton City. Jean wiped her face. I don't want to see him. Actually, I think that he's not bad. Although his aptitude is a little bad, it's good that he's devoted and obsessed with you. Are you sure you'll allow me to fall in love? Jean raised her eyebrow. Mubier will disappear from Southampton City soon. Jean smiled. She hung up the phone and walked out of the bathroom. George was rather lazy. He usually slept until he woke up naturally in the morning. Nonetheless, Jean had no choice but to wake him up for school today. He rubbed his eyes in a daze. Jean kissed his forehead. Be good. It's the first day of school today. George forced himself to get up and staggered to the bathroom. Jean put on some simple makeup and changed into a white slim dot fit professional shirt with a new dot colored skirt and a pair of white high heels. She tied her hair into a neat ponytail and looked very professional. Even so, it still could not hide her sexiness. She was ready, and so was George. Jean held George's hand as they went downstairs. Breakfast was prepared downstairs. At this moment, Alexander, Jennifer, and Joshua were having their breakfast. Jean brought George over as well. Everyone sat at the same table and ate their breakfast. Jean said, George needs a designated driver. Alexander looked up at Jean. Once I go to work, I won't have time to pick up George. Okay, Alexander replied. Jennifer hurriedly said, don't worry. I'll get the driver to pick up George. You can just go to work at ease. Jean glanced at Jennifer and faintly said, thank you. After eating breakfast, Jean sent George into the private car. After giving him a few reminders, she followed Alexander and got into Alexander's private car with Joshua. In the car, Alexander said coldly, don't think that just because you're my daughter, you can go to the company and do whatever you want. You're a newcomer. Although your grandfather asked me to arrange a high position for you, it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. Okay. Jean agreed indifferently. Along the way, Alexander kept lecturing, and he made himself sound like he was in a very high position. They arrived at the Lawrence Enterprise. Before Alexander got out of the car, he instructed Jean, after Joshua and I leave, you can get out of the car. I don't want others to misunderstand. In the company, I've always treated everyone equally. Jean sneered. So there's no misunderstanding if he leaves with Joshua. He treats everyone equally. She still nodded. Alexander and Joshua walked for quite a while before Jean got out of the car and walked into the Lawrence Enterprise. She first went to the Human Resources Department to report herself. Then, under the arrangements of the department, she went to her office as the marketing director of the Lawrence Enterprise. Joshua was the deputy director and had always been. The previous director had been temporarily sent to another branch office yesterday to be the general manager. Jean sat in her seat. The door was knocked and opened. Director, hello, I'm your secretary. My name is Amy. Jean nodded slightly. 
In the future, if you need anything, just tell me. I'll try my best to fulfill your request. In ten minutes, call everyone above the department head for a meeting. Some people's imposing manner would be revealed as soon as they spoke. Jean was one of them. Understood. The secretary was extremely respectful. While you're at it, help me make a cup of coffee without sugar. Got it. The secretary left. Jean turned on her computer and went on the company's intranet to familiarize herself with the internal culture of the Lawrence Enterprise. After a while, the secretary placed a cup of coffee in front of Jean and reported, I've gathered everyone above the department head to wait for you in the marketing department's meeting room. All right. Jean took a sip of the coffee and stood up to walk toward the meeting room. The meeting room was a little noisy. When everyone saw Jean appear, they quickly shut their mouths. In fact, it was not strange for everyone to be curious. In one night, their leader had changed just like that. Jean sat in the middle and looked at the dozen people below. She asked casually, where's the deputy director? He went to attend the general manager's meeting, the secretary said quickly. So, Joshua went to attend a meeting between the higher.ups, but Jean was not informed. Jean did not care. She said to everyone calmly, hello everyone, I'm Jean Lawrence, the new director of the marketing department. I've gathered everyone for a meeting today to get to know each other. We'll be working together a lot in the future. I hope you'll support me. Everyone looked at the young director. They were still a little surprised when they saw the aura that she emitted. The previous director was over 40 years old. Although the deputy director was only 23 years old, everyone knew he was not in charge of anything. I won't take up too much of your time. I'll use 20 minutes to give you a short meeting and give you a few tasks. Jean was calm and serious. It was hard to tell that she was young and inexperienced. Firstly, since this was sudden, the previous director and I didn't have a detailed handover of work, so I need everyone present to sort out some of the work on your hands and report to me. I need to know all the current work of the marketing department, as well as the next plan. Before getting off work this afternoon, all the supervisors will report to me. Understood, the supervisors quickly responded in unison. Secondly, I need a detailed list of the people in the marketing department. The list includes the specific duties of the people, the time they've been in the company, and their results of the past three years, Jean instructed. Amy will provide this to me. Yes, director, the secretary quickly responded. Thirdly, someone suddenly knocked on the door. Everyone turned their heads. An employee said, Director Lawrence, you were asked to go to the general manager's meeting room. Jean's eyes narrowed. At first, she was not asked to go. Now, she was called halfway. They must be hiding evil intentions. Chapter 74 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Jean was domineering in the workplace. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation, Director Lawrence, you were asked to go to the general manager's meeting room. Jean's eyes moved slightly. Dutch she nodded slightly. Okay. Then, she turned to the others. Thirdly, I'll set up a department dedicated to tackling the toughest problems. Regardless of whether you're a supervisor or an employee, those who are willing can sign up with Amy. After she finished, she directly left the meeting room. You're dismissed. Jean did not drag things out. One would not think that she was arrogant, nor would one think that she was someone to be trifled with. Jean walked toward the general manager's meeting room. The meeting room's door was opened. Jean entered. Many people were sitting in the meeting room. There were about 20 people. The Lawrence Enterprise's senior leaders were all present. General Manager, are you looking for me? Jean was neither humble nor arrogant. She walked to Alexander's side and asked. Alexander frowned slightly. Facing so many people, Jean did not show the slightest bit of fear. She was so calm and collected, which surprised him. Sit. 
Alexander gestured for Jean to sit. Jean sat at the side of the meeting room. According to her position, she was not considered low, but she was definitely not high among this group of people. Despite that, according to her seniority, she was indeed incomparable to the others, so she knew her position very well. After Jean sat, Alexander said as if he was explaining the change this time, as the general manager of Flanders Branch is unwell, he temporarily asked for a long time off to rest, so I transferred the marketing director over. It was an emergency, so I didn't have time to discuss it with everyone. The marketing director left, and the position was vacant. For the sake of the company's normal development, Jean became the current marketing director. Jean, please introduce yourself. Jean nodded and quickly stood up. Dear leaders and colleagues, hello, Jean had just spoken a little when she was interrupted. There's no need for introductions. The senior president of the General Affairs Department, Winston Stone, directly cut her off. Everyone knows that she's your daughter. What else is there to introduce? It's not that I don't approve of you arranging for your daughter to work at the company, President Lawrence. After all, 60% of the shares of the Lawrence Enterprise are in the hands of the Lawrences. It's perfectly normal for you to nurture your successors. However, the position of marketing director is extremely important. The entire operation of the Lawrence Enterprise is driven by the marketing department. You want to let a young girl in her 20s lead the marketing department. With all due respect, as a director and senior president of the company, I can't agree with the executive general manager's opinion. You're simply using our hard work to take the fall of the Lawrences. I agree with President Stone's opinion, the senior president of the finance department, Bryce Hoffman, said angrily, previously when the Lawrences arranged for Joshua, who had just graduated from university, to be the deputy director of the marketing department, we had quite an opinion. But to say the least, there was still a marketing director above Joshua, who was in charge of everything in the marketing department. In a way, someone was in charge of the overall situation. We also felt that it was common sense for Joshua to learn more from him. Now, the Lawrences acted rashly and handed the entire marketing department to a newbie who has no experience and probably doesn't know what the workplace is like. How can we, people who have worked diligently in the Lawrence enterprise for so many years, endure this? I very much agree with the opinions of the two senior presidents, the senior president of the Human Resources and Public Relations Department, Michelle Williams, also spoke. She was very agitated. I've worked in the Human Resources and Public Relations Department for many years. I'm very clear about all the key leaders of all the enterprises in Southampton City, big and small. There has never been a company that would act so recklessly and let their child take up such an important position. Most people start from the bottom and later take on important positions in the company step by step through hard work. Of course, the Lawrences of the Lawrence Enterprise can have an innate advantage, but it doesn't mean that they can act so recklessly. According to my understanding of Jean, she's just a single mother who has been drifting abroad for a few years and has a child. She has no experience in the workplace. Moreover, according to the information given to me by the Human Resources Department, Jean doesn't even have an official diploma. Jean listened to everyone's doubts about her indifferently. The people at the scene did not even consider Jean's emotions. Michelle continued to speak in a righteous tone, a few days ago, there were rumors that Jean has a close relationship with the person in charge of MUK. Everyone in Southampton City was talking about how they looked at Jean in a different light. I'm sorry. I don't think it's something worth bragging about. With my many years of experience in human relations, a real business leader wouldn't ruin his future just because of some so-called female confidant. Let me ask all the senior presidents here. There should be quite a number of female confidants around you. How many of them can influence your judgment in the business world? I don't think there's any. Michelle was sending a direct message to everyone present. Just because Jean and West had a relationship, it did not mean that things should be convenient for her. Jean was still useless. Such a high-dot-level meeting suddenly seemed to have turned into a criticism assembly. 
Jean looked at everyone. She saw everyone's expressions of ridicule towards her. This included Alexander and Joshua, who were gloating at her misfortune. She smiled and said without batting an eyelid, I accept all the doubts that everyone had toward me just now. For a person who's only 25 years old to suddenly take over such an important position, if I was in your shoes, I would have the same attitude as you. This is not to go against anyone or to show my authority. It's just out of a sense of responsibility towards the company. The words that were spoken neither too fast nor too slow shocked everyone. Who would have thought that under such circumstances, Jean would still be able to face everything so calmly? There seemed to be a hidden meaning in her words. On one hand, she seemed to be reminding everyone not to target anyone too much and not to be aggressive just because of their high position and power. At the same time, she seemed to be giving everyone a way out. It was all based on the premise of responsibility. It made the people at the scene feel that there was no way to refute it. Jean continued to say, before entering the Lawrence Enterprise, I've heard a lot about the enterprise's development. It's said that our business is old dot fashioned now. As an electrical appliance industry, we're still relying on the traditional offline sales model. Our solid users are still a group of former diehard fans, but most of those diehard fans are already over 40 years old. We don't have much of a market share for the young people. What does this mean? Everyone looked at Jean. Thinking that she was useless, no one thought that she would say something so professional. At this moment, the scene was a little quiet. Jean spoke frankly, this means that our company needs fresh blood. Not only do we need to expand the market, but we also need new people to give the company an impact. Before I achieve something, I can't guarantee what I can bring to the company. However, in front of so many senior presidents, mark my words. Within a month, I'll win the exclusive partnership with MUK, the eat.commerce company, in Harkin. After two months, the Lawrence Enterprise's volume of business will double on that basis. The market share of 25 to 35. Year. Olds will reach a third of the Lawrence Enterprise's total user base. Right after she finished, everyone was shocked. Jean paused, then added with a strong aura, otherwise, I'll take the blame and resign. Chapter 75 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Achieved her wish translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Otherwise, I'll take the blame and resign. Jean enunciated each word clearly. Everyone looked at her. She had a calm and collected manner, and she was also domineering. Anyone can say such arrogant words. In the midst of the shock, Winston snorted coldly. Why should we waste our time and let you do whatever you want here? Why should we let you trifle with the company that we worked so hard to build? Not to mention doubling the volume of business and increasing the share, the fact that you want to win the contract with MUK is simply a joke. Is this the reason the Lawrence Enterprise has been stagnating for so many years? Jean retorted. Winston's expression turned even uglier. What do you mean? You've never accepted anything new. You've always chosen to do things step dot by dot step. In the past, when the Lawrence Enterprise still had a market and everyone believed in the old dot fashion effect, this path was feasible. Now, with the development of information technology, people's acceptance of things has increased rapidly. Even in the face of our enterprise's declining market share and volume of business, you're still so conservative and old dot fashioned, President Stone. Is there still hope for the future of the Lawrence Enterprise? Gene. Winston was ridiculed by Jean. He slammed the table and stood up. Don't think that you can do whatever you want here just because you're a member of the Lawrences. I never thought that I could do whatever I want just because I'm a Lawrence. On the contrary, because I'm a Lawrence, I have an unshirkable responsibility in the Lawrence enterprise. That's why I want to change. I want to change the traditional business model of the Lawrence Enterprise and find a business model that's more suitable for the masses and more easily accepted by people. Jean looked at Winston. She was not afraid at all, and her aura was still very strong. 
Yes, I admit that the Lawrence Enterprises business has indeed fallen behind and can't keep up with the trend. We also want to change this. Winston was still very angry. But you, a little girl with an illegitimate child, don't even have a good reputation. What ability do you have that's worth us handing over the responsibility to you? Is a month or two so hard for you to accept? Jean questioned. The workplace never does things that waste time. This is irresponsible to nearly 10,000 employees in our enterprise. You speak so grandly. Let me ask you then, President Stone. Do you already have a transformation plan? Is the Lawrence Enterprise already starting to develop in this aspect? We're already starting the transformation project. If everything goes as expected, there'll be a huge change in half a year. Half a year. Jean's lips curled up. Winston's expression was very ugly. He had been in the Lawrence Enterprise for many years, but he was actually humiliated by a little girl at the meeting. I said I only need two months, and you need half a year. Isn't that a waste of time instead? Jean looked at Winston. The half a year has been planned out, and it's not something you say casually. You said that you can make our enterprise completely transform and gain profits in two months. Do you think we're stupid and believe whatever you say? What if I achieve it? Jean raised her eyebrows slightly. I'll write my name backward. So you agreed. Winston was stunned. Don't set me up here. I won't agree. President Stone, you're probably worried about having to write your name backward then. Jean, that's enough. Winston gnashed his teeth in anger. Actually, to me, it's not important at all whether I take on the position of marketing director, Jean suddenly said. Winston was trembling with anger. This little girl is deliberately going against me, isn't she? She was so aggressive just now, but she's suddenly taking a step back now. Jean said, I've said it before. I can understand the concerns of all the leaders. Of course, this concern has indeed made me deeply feel the reason the Lawrence Enterprise can't be transformed. Jean, watch your words, Alexander called out to her. Jean nodded. On such an occasion, she would still give Alexander face. I don't want the position of marketing director. I only need the enterprise to give me a project team. The team members will be chosen by me. The goal is very simple, which is to obtain the exclusive rights to MUK and let the Lawrence Enterprise transform into online marketing. In this way, I'll only manage a small group of people to do a project to overcome the difficulties. It won't affect the entire operation of the enterprise. If that's the case, do any of you still have any objections? She had reached this point. If they still refused, they would be deliberately making things difficult for her. Bryce asked, then what if you don't get the exclusive rights to the MUK partnership? I'll leave at any time. Jean was very determined. But, what if I get it? Alexander directly said, I'll leave the position of marketing director to you. I believe that the others won't have any objections. Okay. Jean agreed immediately. Winston still felt a little uncomfortable in the end. He said, the Lawrences are still siding with their people. Alexander is already so old, yet he still lets a 20.year.old girl mess around in the company. If it wasn't for the fact that I've been in the enterprise for so many years, I would have wanted to find another way out. Alexander's expression changed instantly. In the Lawrence enterprise, other than the chairman, Jonathan, he had the most authority as the executive general manager. Despite that, due to his lack of ability in all aspects, he was always suppressed by the senior presidents of other departments. Many times, they did not even give him face, making it very difficult for him to step down. President Stone Jean was very serious, as the senior president of the Lawrence Enterprise and a member of the board of directors, weren't you being a little too offensive? You just said that as a member of the Lawrences, it's understandable for the Lawrence Enterprise to allow their children to be nurtured here. Now, you're discriminating against us without any reason. Are you deliberately targeting me? 
Or are you targeting my family? What nonsense are you spouting? I'm just saying that from the company's standpoint. May I know which part of the company's interests have been harmed by my appearance? Jean questioned Winston. Winston was somewhat speechless from being rebuked. And according to what I know, didn't you also recruit your nephew into the company and make him the director of the logistics department of the general affairs department? I seem to have also heard that your nephew once caused a small accident. It is said that he's light dot fingered, but because of your reputation, he wasn't punished. Jean deliberately raised her voice, I don't know how you can be so magnanimous and accept such a matter that affects the interests of the company. You. Winston was so angry that his face was red. He never thought that he would be so ugly in public one day. Enough. Alexander's voice was very loud and full of authority. This is a dignified meeting. Don't you have any manners? Jean, Winston, and everyone else fell silent. Alexander said, I won't say anything else. From now on, Jean will establish her project team. The members will be chosen by her. The other higher dot ups also don't have any objections. Once Jean's project fails, she'll leave and never step foot into the enterprise again. However, if she succeeds, the position of a marketing director will belong to her. Winston held back his anger and did not say anything more at this moment. Today's meeting ends here. Meeting adjourned. Alexander said and left in large strides. The corners of Jean's mouth curled into a smile. Achieving her wish was as simple as this. Chapter 76 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Eden's Viciousness Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Everyone left the high-dot-level meeting room. Jean went to Alexander's office and knocked on the door. Come in. Jean pushed the door open and entered. Dad, I have something to discuss with you. Alexander was in a good mood. In many meetings, although he held the highest position, he was always suppressed. Today was a rare occasion where he was so carefree. Seeing Winston, that self-righteous person, constantly being defeated made him feel good. He nodded slightly. Have a seat. Jean sat down obediently in front of Alexander. Alexander still showed his sternness. He said, in the company, you have to have rules. In the future, you can't be so unreasonable and not respect the higher dot ups. Yes. Jean nodded obediently and did not refute. Alexander was still very proud. Jean said, Dad, I hope that you can take on the position of marketing director. Alexander raised his eyebrow and seemed a little unwilling. There are three reasons. Firstly, the position of marketing director is currently vacant. It's impossible to leave it there. The marketing department must have a leader, but you're the only one suitable for the position. Everyone knows about the bet I made with the higher dot ups. Once I win, whoever takes on the position will leave in an awkward position. Only you can happily retreat. Secondly, even though you agreed to give me a team, I still need to rely on the marketing department for a lot of things. If it were someone else, it would be inevitable that there will be conflicts of authority. When that happens, due to these unnecessary small things, everyone will be unhappy, and the losses will outweigh the gains. Thirdly, as the highest leader of the company, if you take over as the director of the marketing department, I feel that you'll become the role model for the Lawrence Enterprise, Jean said clearly. She did not give the other party any reason to reject her. Alexander looked at Jean. Jean's words had moved him indeed. Alexander knew very well that his abilities in the business world were not enough. Over the years, he had made many big decisions but with the help of his father. At this moment, when he was being encouraged by Jean, it gave him the idea of wanting to perform well in the company and even make people look at him in a new light. He said calmly without batting an eyelid, you were appointed by your grandfather to the company. I can't go against his wishes, and I also hope that you can make a difference in the company. Since you just entered the company, you'll need me to go to the marketing department to help you, so I'll agree to it. 
Thank you, Dad. Jean looked very excited. No matter what, if Alexander was the director of the marketing department, she would not have to worry about other people with intentions making things difficult for her. Don't be happy too early. If you can't keep your promises, you'll have to leave. I won't plead on your behalf. Okay. Jean agreed immediately. Go and work hard, Alexander ordered her to leave. Jean left respectfully. She walked into the elevator and returned to her floor. Jean's phone rang at this time. She looked at the incoming call and picked it up. Monica. What are you doing? Monica's lazy voice was heard coming from the other side. I'm working, Jean answered and added, at the Lawrence Enterprise. You really went. Monica was a little doubtful. Or else. Jean just had a huge battle before this. Why do you always fight with the Lawrences? What is it about them that makes them worthy of your attention? Monica was very unhappy. I'm paying attention to them to take back what belongs to me, Jean said coldly. What? Monica did not hear her clearly. Why are you looking for me? Jean directly changed the topic. I just want to ask how you're doing today. When you were drunk last night, did you do something with Fourth Master? Monica had a gossipy look on her face. Jean was speechless. Stop thinking about it. Nothing happened. Really? Monica did not believe her. Fourth Master Swan isn't the kind of person who won't do anything. Jean pursed her lips. Indeed, he's not. Are you hiding something from me? Monica sensed Jean's silence and quickly asked. No, I just don't have anything to say. Jean seemed to be a little impatient. I'm going to work, bye. Hey. Monica shouted. Jean had hung up the phone. She got out of the elevator and returned to her office. In any case, there was no one sitting in the director's office. Alexander would not come here. Hence, for the time being, she had not thought of changing offices. Joshua's office was next to hers. Joshua came back earlier than Jean. At this moment, he closed the door and was making a call. Eden, Jean went on a killing spree at the general manager's meeting today. Several high-dot-level leaders were rendered speechless by her words. Is that so? Eden held the phone, and his face was a little gloomy. In that case, Jean is indeed more powerful than we thought. In any case, I don't think she's a rookie. So what do you want me to do for you? Eden asked. It was clear that he had asked Joshua to monitor Jean's every move and report to him. Now, it was Joshua who did not want Jean to have a good time. L.R.G. Joshua naturally did not think too much and quickly said, Of course, I don't want her to stay in the Lawrence Enterprise. This is mine to begin with. If she's here, wouldn't she be fighting with me on purpose? So you want to get rid of Jean? I want to get rid of Jean. Looking at her awe-inspiring manner in the meeting today, I even felt that my father was looking at her in a different light. Eden, you must help me. I can't let Jean steal my things. Besides, if she really takes over the Lawrence Enterprise, not to mention me, my sister won't be able to get any benefits from the Lawrences. Naturally, you won't be able to get any either. I don't think much of the Lawrences' small favors, Eden said with some sarcasm. Joshua suddenly felt a little embarrassed. Well, I'm with your sister, and your sister doesn't get along with Jean. I can't let Jean continue to strut around like this. If she's bullying you, she's bullying your sister. She should be taught a lesson. So what should I do? Right now, I feel that both my grandfather and father are on her side. If she achieves results, I'm afraid that the consequences will be unbearable. The more Joshua spoke, the more worried he became. Then don't let her achieve anything. Eden enunciated each word clearly and continued, You just told me that Jean promised to win the cooperation rights of the MUK group at the meeting, right? Yes, she said that she'll do it within a month, or she'll take the blame and resign. 
isn't that easy to handle. As long as she doesn't win the cooperation rights, it's fine. But I feel that she has a plan in mind. Do as I say. First of all, the Lawrence Enterprise is currently lacking a marketing director. The position of this director can only be taken by someone you trust, or you can take the initiative to volunteer for the position. No matter what, Jean's project team will require the support of the marketing department in many areas. Once you take control of the marketing department, Jean won't be able to develop. Joshua was stunned. How could he not have thought of this? Chapter 77 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Roping in Confidence Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Next, no matter what, you have to think of a way to place a few of your confidants into Jean's project team. Once Jean has any movements, you'll know. You won't have to be afraid that she'll unknowingly cause trouble. Eden suggested some strategies, unhurriedly. Okay. Joshua quickly nodded. Lastly, go and secretly investigate the preferences of West, MUK's person in charge. Rumor has it that Jean is West's lover, right? Find a woman to eliminate Jean. When that happens, how do you think Jean can work with MUK? Men like a novelty. I got it. Joshua appeared to be unusually excited. At first, he was confused and did not know how to stop Jean's development. After hearing what Eden said, he was suddenly full of confidence. If you have any problems, look for me. However, let me get straight to the point. If I tell you these things and you reveal them to a third person, don't expect me to help you in the future, Eden threatened. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone no matter what, Joshua promised. Eden did not say anything more and hung up the phone. He was sitting in his large office. He stood up, lit a cigarette, and walked toward the French window. Swanhaven Bank under the Swan Enterprise was located in the most luxurious area of Southampton City. It was the tallest office building. As Eden smoked, he looked down at the entire city, and the corner of his mouth curled up into a cold smile. Jean could forget about escaping from him. Not even his fourth uncle could have her. At the Lawrence Enterprise. Jean seriously and carefully looked at the resumes submitted by her secretary. It was indeed not an easy task to select 10 people out of more than 200 people. She picked up the phone and said, Amy, during the meeting earlier, I asked all the supervisors to come to report to me about their work. Remind them that those who are prepared can come earlier. Yes, the secretary said respectfully. Jean lowered her head again and briefly picked some that she felt she could consider. As for who she wanted to pick, she needed others to help her make the decision. After all, she was not familiar with the internal department of the company. After a while, there was a knock on the door. Come in. The secretary stood at the door, hesitating to speak. Just say what you want to say. Deputy Director Lawrence has been in a meeting with all the supervisors, so they can't come to report their work. As for how long it'll take for the meeting to be over, I don't know yet. The secretary said awkwardly. Jean sneered. Of course, she knew what Joshua was going to do. It was just to stop her from developing. Nonetheless, based on her understanding of Joshua, he should not have acted so quickly. In the end, she did not care. She said, since the deputy director has work arrangements, don't disturb them. Come in. I want to ask you something. Okay. Amy walked in and closed the door. Jean was straightforward. How many years have you been in the company? Which department did you work in before? What did you do specifically? I've been in the company for three years. Before that, I was in the secretarial room of the General Affairs Department. This morning, I was transferred here to become your secretary, Amy answered quickly. Do you have much contact with the people in the company? Jean asked. I have more contact with the people in the General Affairs Department. I only contact very few people from other departments. After all, we're not all on the same floor. 
The nature of their work is also different, so it's very difficult to have contact with them. Can I say that you don't know most of the people in the company? Especially the people from other departments other than the General Affairs Department. Yes. Jean nodded slightly. Okay, I got it. Amy was a little confused by the question. Jean said, call Forrest Jackson in for me. He's not a supervisor, so he shouldn't be in the meeting. Okay, I'll call him right away, Amy said quickly. Soon, a man about 35 years old appeared at the door of Jean's office and knocked on the door. Director Lawrence, you're looking for me. You don't have to call me Director Lawrence. You should have heard that I wasn't appointed. You can call me Team Leader Lawrence. Team Leader Lawrence. Sit. Jean let Forrest sit in front of her. May I know why you're looking for me? I've seen your resume in the Enterprise. Jean pulled out a sheet of information from the thick pile and placed it in front of Forrest. Forrest took a look and sneered. A new broom sweeps clean. If you want to fire me, then fire me. Anyway, I've had enough of staying in such a company where I can't see the future. Jean did not seem to hear what he said and said straightforwardly, you've been in the company for ten years. In the first seven years, you were excellent and even served as the supervisor of the channel development department, but you started to decline in the eighth year. From last year to this year, your monthly performances were only passing. I just want to ask what made you decline like this. Are you mocking me, team leader Lawrence? Forrest did not look too good. Dot, no, I just want to know whether it's because of your personal reasons, the company's system, or because of someone in the company that has led to your lack of enthusiasm for work. Jean looked at him, don't worry, I don't have any intention of firing you, nor do I have any intention of looking down on you. In my opinion, you're a talent and shouldn't be buried just like that. Since you put it so nicely, I'll tell you frankly. I'm especially dissatisfied with the Lawrence Enterprise. Other than being dissatisfied with the enterprise's unchanging attitude and lack of responsibility, I'm also extremely dissatisfied with the deputy director, who's your younger brother. I just don't understand how such an incompetent person can be so arrogant and bossy in the company. You're right. My monthly performances from last year to this year were all thanks to your younger brother. As expected. Jean smiled faintly. It was just as she had expected. You must be curious why I didn't resign, right? Forrest said to Jean, to put it in another way, why should I resign? I dedicated my youth to the Lawrence Enterprise. I feel sorry for myself for leaving just like that. Of course, you can fire me and compensate me with a high amount of pension. I'll gladly accept it and leave immediately. How can there be such a good thing in this world? How can you leave just because you want to? Forrest did not look good. Not only can you not leave, but you must also stay and become one of my project members. Jean was serious, then she smiled. Congratulations, you've become the first member of my project team. Forrest frowned as if he did not know what Jean was thinking. Joshua and I don't get along, Jean suddenly explained. Forrest was a little surprised. Are you curious about why I would tell you so directly? However, if you really know my family, you'd know that Joshua and I are extremely at odds, so the person who has a grudge against him is the person I can trust the most. Right now, you're the only person among so many people that I can be sure of this, and I need you to help me pick out nine people I can trust, Jean enunciated each word. There was no chance for Forrest to refuse. Chapter 78 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Win Popular Support Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation in the office, Forrest looked straight at Jean as if he could not accept it. Jean did not consider Forrest's emotions at all. She handed Forrest a stack of resumes. Help me choose the other nine people. Forrest was still a little confused. It seemed that he had never thought that such a good thing would happen to him. The Selection Principles First, they must not be Joshua's confidants. Second, 
they must not have any connections with anyone in the company. Third, they must not be too weak. Jean looked very serious. Forrest took a long time to react. He asked, you're not playing tricks with me, are you? Jean smiled. At this time, you have to believe in yourself. Forrest took a deep breath. Even if you're playing tricks with me, I don't have a choice. It seemed that he was a sensible person. Jean just watched as Forrest took the resumes and then picked and eliminated them. She did not rush him and just waited quietly for him. After nearly an hour, Forrest hesitated and left 15 people behind, I think these people are the most suitable for the project. Apart from meeting the three conditions, their attitude toward work is also relatively positive. Jean took the list of the 15 people. Are there any of them that you have a good relationship with? Forrest was stunned and nodded. Yes. Remove those that you have a good relationship with. I'm very fair and just, Forrest said righteously, I definitely didn't choose them from my personal standpoint. I know, but the workplace is a place that isn't friendly to friends. Once it involves interests, it's very easy for you to turn against each other, Jean said to Forrest, rather than leaving behind hidden dangers that may harm the relationship between friends, it's better to nip it in the bud. Forrest was convinced by Jean. He eliminated the two people he had a better relationship with, leaving 13 people. Are there any under 25 years old? No, anyone over 45 years old? No, then pick the nine people you think are the most suitable from this pile of people and pick them again based on your feelings. Don't hesitate. Forrest nodded and went through the list again. In the end, the list of the nine people was decided. Jean looked at the resumes of the ten people in front of her, including Forrest's. She said, Okay, the meeting will be held in the conference room in twenty minutes. I have work arrangements. Okay. Forrest was respectful. The moment he left, he was a little hesitant. Are you really going to use these people? Or else? Jean raised her eyebrow. I'm just a little employee, after all. Forrest wondered, is she not worried that the people I chose might not be capable enough? Use people without suspicion and don't use suspicious people. Jean smiled. I believe in you. Forrest's heart wavered a little. This was the first time he was trusted so much. Thank you. Forrest said sincerely and then walked out of Jean's office. Jean looked in the direction of the door. She turned back to look at the list in her hand. Ability in the workplace was important, but winning popular support was even more important. Jean picked up the phone. Amy, come in for a while. Okay. Amy knocked on the door and entered. Jean handed the resumes in her hand to Amy. Report to the General Affairs Department and have them send out documents immediately. Withdraw these people from their current positions and let them join the Marketing Department's Special Reinforcement Team. The team leader is me, and the direct leader is the Executive General Manager, Alexander Lawrence. Understood. Half an hour. I need to see the internal documents. Understood. Amy took the list respectfully and left. After Jean gave her instructions, she thought for a moment and called her dad. Dad. Yes. I've picked out the list of my team members. Alexander frowned slightly. He hadn't expected Jean to be so efficient. Now, I'll get my secretary to report to the General Affairs Department and send out the documents. Dad, you should also send out a document regarding your concurrent position as the marketing director. Okay. Xiao Jinhong responded. Thank you, Dad. Do well. If you don't, you know the consequences. Yes. Jean hung up the phone. She sat in the office and waited for a while. When Forrest came to the office to look for her, she walked into the meeting room. Everyone in the meeting room looked at her, feeling a little overwhelmed. Although Jean's reputation was not very good, no matter what, she was a Lawrence, so she definitely had rights. Now that they were suddenly selected, they could not help but feel a little excited. 
Jean was straightforward. The company gave me a test. They asked me to take down the MUK cooperation rights within a month. If I can't take it down, I'll have to return home. Only by taking it down will I be able to take up the position of marketing director, so I need your help. There are so many people in the company. Why did you choose us? One of the employees suddenly asked. In the end, he was still very puzzled. I won't say much about the selection criteria. You just need to know that you're the best to me, Jean enunciated each word. Everyone was still a little surprised. Jean did not think of spending time explaining. She went straight to the point. Let's talk about the next work arrangement. The others also listened quietly to her instructions. The General Affairs Department is currently making drafts. They'll temporarily divest all of your current jobs so that you can devote your attention to my project team. The work of the project is simple but tough at the same time. It'll be very difficult to take down an international company within a month. Therefore, before detailing the specific work, I need to reiterate one thing. Once the project is completed, I'll become the marketing director, and everyone here will be promoted and given a raise. If I fail and leave, you should be able to return to your original positions, but it's unknown whether they'll accept you if you go back. What do you mean? What I mean is that once you follow me, you'll have made enemies with many people, so it won't be as easy as you think to return to your original positions. Then we. Opportunities and challenges go hand in hand. The reason I didn't try to get everyone's opinion was that I didn't want you to have the chance to regret it. Jean looked at them, and she was extremely serious. I didn't give you any way out. From now on, you can only follow me forward, and I won't allow my project to fail. Everyone looked at Jean. Since she had said so much, they knew that they could not refute her. Jean said, all right, let's talk about the specific work. In the meeting room, Jean arranged the division of work for the project team one by one. She also clarified everyone's work responsibilities and gave them tasks at the same time. It lasted for a full three hours. Jean looked at the time. It was 2 o'clock p.m. She said, your assignment is due tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. From now on, please be prepared to work overtime and miss your mealtime at any time. Of course, I'll compensate you three times your salary when you're not working. Meeting adjourned. Jean stood up and left. After she left, everyone also left. Some people still had some objections at the beginning, but after the meeting, everyone was speechless. They were completely subdued. Chapter 79 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Don't worry, I'll only do perverted things to you translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation at the Lawrence Enterprise, in the Deputy Director's Office. Joshua looked at the documents released by the General Affairs Department and was so angry that his body was trembling. He hurriedly called Eden. Eden, I didn't expect that Jean would think ahead of us. What do you mean? Eden frowned slightly. Joshua said, my father has taken over the position of marketing director. I was discussing with a senior to ask him to take the initiative to volunteer. I didn't expect that the documents would be sent out so soon. Moreover, I didn't think that she'd ask my father to take over the position. Based on my understanding of my father, he wouldn't be so nosy. He must be doing this to help Jean. The more he spoke, the more agitated he became. Calm down. Eden's voice deepened. Joshua endured it and said again, what's even more outrageous is that the project team members have been selected. I originally restrained all the marketing department supervisors so that Jean couldn't rope in the supervisors and talents. I also made it so that she couldn't find anyone to help her select the most suitable personnel. I didn't expect that she'd directly skip the supervisors and select all the employees. The people on her list aren't my people. There are even some people who are dissatisfied with me to begin with. Eden's grip on his phone tightened. Initially, he did not think much of Jean. 
In his opinion, Jean was just relying on her good looks and using her body to achieve some goals. It was impossible for her to achieve anything in the business world. At this moment, if someone was helping Jean behind her back, then she would be really difficult to deal with. Eden, what should I do now? Joshua seemed to be on the verge of breaking down. I can't even get into Jean's project team now. If she gets the MUK cooperation rights, then she'll be the marketing director. Her authority will be above mine, and she will continue to bully me. What's the rush? Eden seemed to be much calmer. This is just the beginning, and you already feel that you can't win. What else can you do next? It's better to give up now. No, I won't give up. I definitely won't give up. Eden, help me. Joshua placed all his hopes on Eden. Eden was silent for a few seconds before he asked, You don't have a confidant in Jean's project team, but can't you bribe one now? Joshua was surprised again. What kind of determination does an employee have? If you give them more benefits, how difficult can it be to bribe one or two people? It's just that I've never done it before. This was why Joshua did not think in this direction. The employees of the company were all taking the initiative to fawn over him. He did not give those who did not fawn over him a good time. I'm teaching you now. Send me the information of all the employees. I'll help you see how to bribe them. Okay, I'll send it to you right away, Joshua said hurriedly. Don't go and get their resumes in public. If Jean is smart enough, once you do that, she'll think of what you're going to do. Find someone you trust and bring out the information secretly. Don't alert the enemy, Eden warned. I know what to do. Eden gave some more instructions before the two of them hung up. Joshua put down his phone and revealed a cold smile. Jean wants to snatch the Lawrence Enterprise from me. Don't even think about it. Jean was handling her own work. Until the end of the day, she stretched and stood up from her seat. Today, other than setting up her project team and arranging all the project work, the rest of the time was spent on thoroughly understanding the Lawrence Enterprise. The more she understood, the more ironic it was. Back then, her mother had worked so hard to build the empire for the Lawrences, but now, the Lawrences had squandered it. It was simply laughable. She even suspected that her mother was blind back then. Was she blind to have taken a liking to Alexander, an incompetent man who was still fooling around? Jean got up and walked out of the office. Outside the door, her team members were still working overtime. They had no intention of leaving. Of course, the tasks she had given them today were very heavy. If they did not work overtime, they would not be able to complete it. She took a few glances, turned around, and left work first. After all, her work had ended. There was no need to waste time here. Moreover, her presence might give these people a greater sense of oppression. Perhaps because she did not leave, they did not dare to leave even if they finished. Besides, it was her son's first day of school today. She had to go back and accompany him to show some concern. With this thought in mind, Jean drove back a little faster. When she arrived at the Lawrence family's house, it was 6.30 p.m. Alexander and Joshua had also arrived home. Joshua obviously looked at Jean in a bad mood. Jean pretended not to see it and politely called Alexander before returning to her room to look for George. Joshua looked at Jean and really wanted to strangle her to death. What right does this woman have to be so arrogant in front of me? What right does she have? Jean returned to her room, but George was not in the room. She frowned slightly. Logically speaking, elementary school would be over at 4.30 p.m., so he should be back by 5 o'clock p.m. at the latest. She hurriedly called George. Fortunately, George had had his private phone since he was three years old. The main thing was that his IQ was high, so he had no trouble using a phone. George picked up. Mom. Why aren't you home? He's at my place. At this moment, the one who spoke was. Fourth Master Swan. 
Jean frowned. Fourth Master Swan. It's me. The voice on the other end was low and deep, and it had an attractive tone. Don't you feel that there's something wrong with your behavior? Why did you bring my son to your place? Do you know that you've committed a kidnapping? I can sue you. Jean could not hide her anger. Not only did Edward not care about Jean's anger, but he also chuckled instead. Jean gritted her teeth. She felt that she did not need to give this man any more nonsense. It was simply a waste of time. She said, I'll come and pick up George right away. Ms. Lawrence, the person on the other end suddenly called out to her. What? Didn't I tell you that I've taken a liking to your son? Edward's tone was still calm and unhurried. Jean's anger skyrocketed. She could not suppress her anger and shouted, Are you a pervert? Don't worry, I'll only do perverted things to you. Dot, I'll send George back later. Ms. Lawrence, please don't worry. I'll take good care of him. After saying that, Edward did not care about Jean's emotions and hung up the phone. Damn it. Jean gritted her teeth. At this moment, she wanted to kill that guy and shoot him to death. Chapter 80 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Your mother is always right. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation on this day, at 4 o'clock p.m. Teddy did not know what had happened to his master. His master was obviously busy, but he suddenly asked him to leave the company. Teddy thought that something big had happened to his master, but he did not expect that he was just wandering back and forth on this ordinary street. He did not know what his master saw in this street. It was until school was over at a school called Angerberg. Their car stopped at the gate. There were many children coming and going after school, and almost all of them were picked up by luxury cars. It's little master Lawrence, Teddy said as he looked at a small boy. His master naturally saw it too. George stood at the gate. The car from home had not arrived yet, so he stood there obediently and waited. A few senior primary school students suddenly appeared and surrounded George. I heard that you're a genius. I heard that you caused a sensation in the entire school on the day of your interview. My parents are all talking about you at home. You're so amazing, aren't you? A few boys cornered George. One of the teachers clearly saw it, but because he did not dare to provoke the students involved. In particular, the one leading the group of people surrounding George had a prominent family background, so he turned a blind eye to the situation. It seems like he's going to be bullied, Teddy said quickly. Edward's expression was cold. He opened the car door. Teddy also got out of the car hurriedly. When the two of them walked over, George was pushed to the ground by the few boys. George was not afraid, but he did not resist either. He just looked straight at the few tall boys in front of him. What are you doing? Teddy shouted sternly. When the boys heard the noise, they immediately turned their heads and saw Fourth Master Swan and Teddy. The little boy who was leading the group was not afraid of them at all. He raised his head and said fiercely, it's none of your business. We're teaching our little brother a lesson. Get out of my way, ah. Uh. Teddy grabbed the little boy's collar and fiercely threw him to the ground. When the other little boys saw that their leader was hit, they quickly went forward to hit Teddy. A commotion instantly broke out at the school gate. The school security guards and the teacher quickly made their move. Stop. Stop right now. Teddy pretended not to hear him and settled the other boys in no time. At this moment, the security guards went forward to restrain Teddy. Stop. Edward's voice was deep. The few security guards seemed to be stunned. A security leader asked, Who are you? Why did you hit our school students at the school gate? We have to call the police. Call the police and arrest them. Call the police and arrest them. A little boy lying on the ground shouted loudly, Do you know who I am? I'm young Master Reed of Southampton City. 
I'm the young master of one of the twelve great families of Southampton City. Given how you treated me, I'll ask my father to kill you. Edward sneered. I'm Edward Swan. Tell your father to come and find me. I'll be waiting for you at the Swan family's courtyard any time. All right, you better remember this. I'll make you go bankrupt. The boy said fiercely. Edward completely ignored him. He turned around and faced George, who had stood up. Come with me. No, Edward frowned. My mom will look for me. Are you planning to go back to see your mom like that? Edward asked. George lowered his head and looked at his dirty clothes. He shook his head. He had never wanted Jean to worry about him since he was young. George had never thought of telling her about what had happened today. So, let's go. I'll tell your mother, Edward said and turned around to walk toward his car. Teddy respectfully opened the car door for Edward. George hesitated for a moment before he followed Edward into the car. At the same time, Quinton stayed behind for a while because of a performance at school. The moment he stepped out of the door, he saw his fourth uncle. He was a little excited and ran fast with his short legs. Just as he reached the door of his fourth uncle's car, the car started to move. Aren't you here to pick me up? Quinton watched the car leave with his eyes wide open. In the car, Teddy looked at the rearview mirror. It seems to be Little Master. Do you want me to pick him up and bring him back? Doesn't he have parents? Dot. Teddy was speechless. They did not go straight back to the Swan family's courtyard. Teddy was used to his master's crazy behavior. In any case, he thought that it was a matter of fact that the car was parked in the shopping mall. It was worth noting that his master never went shopping. Now that he was strolling around the children's clothing area, he looked calm. Do you like any of them? Edward asked. He asked George. George responded, my mom said that I can't take things from strangers. Am I considered a stranger? My mom said that you're not a good person. Edward stopped in his tracks. George looked up at him. Edward squatted down. He was 189 centimeters tall, whereas George was 120 centimeters tall. In front of him, George was pitifully small. Edward maintained the same height as George and said, In this world, other than your mom, I'll be the best person to you. Why? George did not believe him. That's because. Edward paused and said to George, You can go back and ask your mom. Then, he stood up and casually walked into a children's clothing store. He said to the shop assistant, I want every style and color of clothes that he can wear. Teddy went to pay for the clothes. After buying the clothes, they returned to the Swan family's bamboo garden. Take a shower first, Edward instructed. George nodded. At that moment, the phone suddenly rang. George hurriedly picked it up. Mom. Why aren't you home? Jean's anxious voice came from the other end. George was about to reply when Edward directly took the phone over and said calmly, he's at my place. At this moment, George looked at Fourth Master Swan talking on the phone. Although Fourth Master Swan looked calm and collected, George still felt that her mother was very angry, so much so that she could kill someone. Fourth Master Swan hung up the phone. George looked at him and asked, is my mom angry? No, he did not believe it. Take a shower. Edward did not explain. I'll take little Master Lawrence to take a shower, Teddy quickly said. There's no need. You can arrange dinner. Teddy expressed that he was used to the crazy fourth master. Hence, he turned around and went straight to the kitchen. Edward brought George to the bathroom. You want to take a shower too. George saw fourth master Swan taking off his clothes. If not, I can do it myself. I didn't say I want to help you take a shower, Edward said, do you know how to save water? Do you lack money? George asked. Saving is a virtue. Dot. 
the two of them showered in the bathroom. Don't you need to take off your glasses? Edward asked. No, Jean had said that he could not take off his glasses in front of outsiders. Edward did not insist. He grabbed the small dot-sized George to his side. I'll help you scrub your back. No need. Despite his protest, George's back was already being scrubbed. Do you want a dad? Edward asked casually. No, George refused immediately. Men are all undesirable. Who said that? My mom. Dot. Edward paused for a long time before he asked, aren't you a man too? She said that I'm still a boy and not a man. Once I become a man, I'll become undesirable. George turned his head and seemed a little puzzled. Is that true? Edward chuckled. Your mother is always right.